So former President Trump is back out on the uh, campaign trail today. We checked in with him earlier in the show. So is the candidate he endorsed to be the next governor in the state of North Carolina, this guy Mark Robinson. Robinson meeting with voters in the state. Uh, just yesterday, most of his campaign staff took off. They resigned amid the fallout from a report on disturbing comments Robinson is uh, reported to have made on a pornography site about 10 years ago. He's been insisting that um, he's not going anywhere. He's staying in the race. Watch. We don't we have not been focused on lies based on salacious stories from 15 years ago. We've been based, we've been talking about the truth of the matter of what's going on in this state. Let's bring Brian McClung in on this, Republican strategist, CEO of Park Street PR, former deputy chief of staff to then Minnesota Governor Tim Pawlenty. Uh, so the question has been, Brian, would this hurt Trump, right? And um, we'll talk about the polling on that state in a minute. The New York Times polling was pretty good for Trump, but, you know, Robinson was down 10. Does it, and most of it was done before this news came out, does it hurt Trump, the Robinson story? You know, it is very rare for a candidate to be hurt up ballot. You know, we yeah. talk frequently about the down ballot impacts. It's rare, but it is possible. And I think at this point, it is an insult to dumpster fires to call the Robinson campaign a dumpster fire. I mean, it has really imploded. And the fact that most of his senior campaign staff have left is no surprise. They barely have a functioning campaign at this point. And when you look at it, Getting to 270 electoral votes is tough for Donald Trump without North Carolina. You would really expect that to be part of his equation to victory. Um, and so I'm, I'm sure that the Trump campaign is concerned about this. It looks like there's really no realistic path to getting Robinson out of the race, so you just have to plow on. Uh, but they are going to have a hard time gaining traction uh, mm -hmm. over these final weeks. As we always talk about, Harris doesn't need to worry about a state like this if she wins Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin. But if she loses Pennsylvania, I was talking about this earlier in the show, and I talk about it a lot, it's, it's one of the two, North Carolina or Georgia, for her that she would need. And to me, more and more as you look at the data, I would have said Georgia a while ago. These are the Sun Belt battleground states where Trump is up in, in the Times, which we'll get to in a minute. But I would have said Georgia, I, I don't know. I think North Carolina is probably a better shot for Harris now. What do you think? Well, yeah, and you have, you know, Roy Cooper, a, a two term Democratic governor of North Carolina. So, and of course, Biden won. Uh, you know, Obama has won there. So it is a state that Democrats have been competitive in and have a chance to win. So, yes, the recent polling shows Trump doing better in those two uh, southwestern states, yes. in Arizona and Nevada. And so now it shifts over, like you say, to Georgia and North Carolina as the southern states that really, I think, are most in play. Those are good numbers for Trump. We'll put them back up, the ones that we just had, as uh, Brian alludes to. It did have North Carolina, but the other two, the one on the left side is really interesting to me, um, Arizona. And Georgia, he's up four. That's a good number for Trump. Again, one poll, and the average is much closer than this, as we talked about earlier in the show. You average them out, it's less than one point. And I think in all of these states are about a point, maybe at, at best. Arizona was plus five Harris, and then the same poll goes plus five Trump. I, I wonder what's, I mean, you know, polls are weird. Could be kind of a, a strange thing in the polling, who knows, but that, that, that was a, that stood out to me. What'd you make of that? Yeah, I think that does stand out. And I think that, you know, in some ways, Arizona and Nevada have kind of flipped um, as to which state Democrats feel like they have their best opportunity in. And so I think you see them going into Nevada, looking at those working class voters and those Latino voters in Nevada as a path to victory there. So that you might see kind of the uh, the order of importance for the Democrats flip out there. Um, but ultimately, like you said at the top of this conversation, it's that, you know, the so-called blue wall across the north, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, if she can hold those that is the strongest suit, that is the strongest hand for her to play. And then if you bring North Carolina in, uh, that's pretty much the ball game. Thanks so much for watching. Just go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.